Thank you. We did it. We hit a thousand before the end of the year. So first off, thank you. Second, let's get into it. My favorite camera gear purchases from 2022. In the order that I purchased them, number one, the Sony a7 IV. That's been my workhorse camera. I'm filming on it right now. That shot almost every single one of the videos that I did this past year. Excellent for pictures, excellent for video. It shoots in 4K. I did a review on it already, so if you wanna check that out, links down below. I'll probably do a follow-up too. Long story short, for photo, for video, social media videos, client videos, killed it. Second was the Sony 50 mil 1.8. This lens right over here. The 50 millimeter range, I knew I was gonna like this one because I wanted to do more portraits, and this is a great portrait lens. Also does really good for product stuff. And then the 1.8 just to get that super blurry background, all without spending a whole lot of money. This lens is only $250, I say only, but compared to a lot of other lenses, especially Sony lenses, this is a great value. And considering I just spent the 2600 on the camera, I didn't have much money left to buy a lens. So there we go. Not long after those two, I picked up the Viltrox 85 mil, f1.8 for doing portraits this got a lot of use out of it it's heavier it's made out of more of a, a metal instead of plastic so it feels more premium great option after those two and i started doing more and more video i ran out of storage quickly so i picked up the samsung t7 this is a two terabyte model i had a 500 gig no i had a one terabyte t5 and i was editing off of that for a while then i got a 500 gig t7 i was editing off of that Ran out of storage on both of those way too quickly. So two terabyte T7. This is what I use to edit everything off of instead of my computer. Lightning quick. You don't even notice that you have an external plugged in. Next up, the small rig 120D. This is an excellent light. So one, it's super tiny. I really like it for that. It's smaller than my, I had the Godox SL60W and the Neewear SL60W, I had both of them. This is double the power and not half the size, but it's really small. So I wanted this for a couple reasons. One, I wanted something more powerful than a 60 watt light. Two, this has an option for V-mount. So that means it doesn't have to be plugged into the wall. I haven't purchased a V-mount battery for it yet. And then you need a little clamp to go with it too. So it, it's another investment. But anyway, it's a really small light, really powerful light. Comes with a great carrying case and it gives you the option for that battery pack. So you don't have to have it plugged into the wall. All reasons why I went with that, no regrets. And then up there as another one of my greatest purchases, the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I was using the M1 Mac mini to do all my editing before, and that was crazy fast, loved that thing. It was excellent. I only got the eight gig version though, and it was only 256 gigs. So I filled it up and some of the editing that I started doing, the eight gig wasn't able to handle it as smoothly as it was in the beginning when I wasn't doing such crazy effects. I didn't need to upgrade, it was still able to get the job done. The other big reason why was just color grading. Since I had an external monitor and I bought a budget monitor, I didn't buy one that was super expensive, the colors weren't always accurate. So I would always have to pair up my iPad and color grade off of that. So it was just annoying. So I wanted something that had a screen on it. Eventually I'll get the studio display to go with it. But for now, I'm just editing everything off of there. The colors, super accurate, which is the biggest reason why I wanted that. And then the M1 Pro is just stupid fast. Blue Yeti microphone, this is the X. Sometimes you just don't wanna do the lav over here like this. Sometimes I just plug that right into the computer, plug it into the camera, gets great audio. Doing the voiceovers, even for recording talking heads, like sometimes I have it on the desk if I have the camera facing this way and I don't wanna use the lav mic, I'll just plug that in instead. Next is the Tamron 24 millimeter F2.8. You almost never hear about this lens, but it was only $200. I needed a 24 millimeter. And what I really liked about it, what got my attention, it works almost like a macro lens because you can get super close with it. I don't have it in my hands because that's what I'm filming with right now. You can get very close to the lens and it'll stay in focus. You can get about seven inches, I think, away from it and it'll still be sharp, be in focus. That's what I really liked about it. So eventually I'll get a higher quality lens. The autofocus on it is very loud, so I don't love it for that, for video. But for photos, it works great. For video, as long as you're gonna mute out the audio, it usually works fine. It gets annoying for the person that might be having it super close and have to listen to that all the time, but you know, it is what it is. For 200 bucks, it's a great lens. This one, I wasn't 100% sure if I was gonna put this one on there. The AirPods Maxes. So these guys, they're pricey. 
So editing with these, excellent, super comfortable. Can leave them on for hours. There's almost no latency between the computer and the headphones. So, so it's not an issue with editing or adding sound or anything like that. And then when I'm done here, I can use them while I'm laying in bed watching TV and not have to disturb anybody because it hooks up to my Apple TV. And lastly, the 24 to 105. A lot of people don't talk about this lens nearly as much because the, either the 28 to 75 or the 24 to 70 gets all the attention because it's a 2.8 and this is only an F4. So everyone automatically just discounts this lens. Most people, not everyone, but most people discount the lens. They say, you know, you can't get enough of a blurry background because it's an F4. A 2.8 would be better. Rather just go with that. I'm very happy with this lens. So a couple of reasons why I wanted this one. One, I really wanted to be able to go all the way into that 105 range. Two, optical image stabilization. So it's built in to the lens. So you don't have to rely on the optical stabilization that's in the camera for it. On the lens, it'll be able to do it for you, steady it out. You don't always need a gimbal to go with it. That's it. Top 10 camera purchases in 2022.